The content in this video is based on the writings of Dr. Antonio Palomo Yake, a veterinarian. Viruses in the coronavirus family are RNA viruses that belong to the genus Nidovirales, which has two subfamilies, the Coronaviridae group, which is comprised of the genera Alpha Coronavirus, Beta Coronavirus and Gamma Coronavirus and the Toroviridae group, which includes the genera Torovirus and Baphnovirus. These viruses cause five diseases in pigs but in our video, we are only going to discuss the porcine respiratory coronavirus also known as PRCV. The porcine respiratory coronavirus was first discovered in 1984. Its incidence and prevalence internationally are very low, and it currently has a very low economic impact on pig production. This virus is a variant of the transmissible gastroenteritis virus family that infects the respiratory tract and is not excreted via feces. Porcine respiratory coronavirus produces antibodies that neutralize the TGE virus. The virus infects animals of all ages, either by direct contact or by aerosol transmission, being more prevalent in areas with a high pig density. The presentation is subclinical, so we can find many seropositive animals without any clinical signs in most countries of the world. Its genomic structure and replication are very similar to those of other animal species and humans. Let's now discuss the pathogenesis of this virus. The route of transmission is direct by oral contact or indirect due to airborne transmission. The virus replicates in the respiratory tract, nasal mucosa and lungs, and infects cells in the nasal epithelium, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. The virus does not cross the placental barrier, although it can be found in the semen of infected boars at six days post-infection. The passive immunity from colostrum usually lasts 10 to 15 weeks, coinciding with the time of entry to the fattening stage and the mixing of animals, when there is the highest risk of infection among them. After infection, the time of nasal excretion of the virus is about 7 to 15 days. Its prevalence is seasonal, increasing in the cold months and decreasing in the warm ones. The clinical signs of the porcine respiratory coronavirus include coughing, dyspnea, abdominal breathing, lethargy, anorexia, and slight growth retardation, symptoms similar to most problems within the porcine respiratory disease complex which is also known as PRDC. Worsening of the symptoms occurs in cases combined with PRRS virus or bacterial infectious agents, which in these cases cause pneumonia that can be severe. The respiratory coronavirus can be located in both the upper and lower respiratory tract. The most characteristic lesions, which are not pathognomonic, are lung consolidation, bronchointerstitial and bronchocatarhal pneumonia, bronchiolar epithelial hyperplasia with loss of epithelial cells, infiltration of leukocytes, lymphocytes, and macrophages into the alveolar septum. Now let us take a look at how we can diagnose the porcine respiratory coronavirus. The clinical signs are not pathognomonic. The lesions help, but it is difficult to make a definitive diagnosis based on the symptoms, and this must be confirmed by sending appropriate samples to the laboratory for virus isolation, focusing on lung tissue, nasal mucosal epithelium, and nasal fluids. A PCR test allows us to differentiate between gastrointestinal and respiratory coronaviruses. ELISA and virus neutralization detect neutralizing antibodies that, neither quantitatively nor qualitatively, can be discerned if they come from one virus or another. Serology serves to check replacement animals in order to confirm their negative status. In the case of virus neutralization, antibodies are detected a week after infection, and persist 18 months after infection in the case of transmissible gastroenteritis, although it is not well known how long they last against respiratory coronavirus. Prevention and control are very important. Early infection in nursing and weaned piglets by respiratory coronavirus results in immunity to PRCV but also creates partial immunity against gastrointestinal problems from the TGE coronavirus. There are no antibiotics or antiviral treatments, only treatments against respiratory symptoms and secondary aggravating agents. The first preventative measure is to prevent the entry of the virus via the replacement animals, through discussion with the genetic supplier and testing during the quarantine. Internal and external biosecurity measures are one of the greatest safeguards to keep the pig farm free of the disease. 
Standards for downtime and all-in-all-out systems are equally recommended. There are currently no commercial vaccines available for porcine respiratory coronavirus. Thank you for watching our videos. We want to end this video with footage of a cute popolite pig that visited our hospital recently. Take a movie. Thank you.